Hello and welcome to a new HiCAD short clip. In this video, I would like to show you the new features in modeling. Let's start with the sheet metal functions, or, more precisely, with the pipes and vessels. The dialog has been extended to include options for creating a segment. As in the Solid Primitives dialog, the segment can now be activated and a start and opening angle can be defined. Furthermore, the option can only be applied to parts with round cross sections. However, the option can only be activated if the part to be created is a sheet metal part. Also, the parts with two circles as cross sections are created in such a way that a bend zone is located on the quadrant point of the circle. For the part round on oval, the center of the flange is located on the quadrant point. This makes the parts symmetrical and easier to divide. Let's continue with the attach function. It has now been generalized and includes the old functions for the hinge, the border lip, and the flange without bend zone. To access the other functions, another button has been added in the flange creation area and another button further down in the parameters area. To create a border lip, we remain in the first mode. The last button, Distance to Connecting Flange, is used for the bend angle. You can adjust the border lip using the length, the distance to the connecting flange, and the bend radius. To create a flange without a bend zone, proceed as usual and select the last button, No Bend Zone, in the parameters area for mode. As before, you can define the clearance instead of the bend radius. To create a hinge, switch to the without flange mode. The last button, distance to connecting flange, is used for the bend angle. Now the distance to the sheet can be entered and the hinge is finished. The old functions have been removed from the ribbon. Instead, other functions, such as the Z-fold, have been moved to the first level. We'll stay in the attach function for a while because the selection flow has changed a bit here. This change neatly separates the modes flange and flange from sketch modes. In the past, it often happened that in the flange from sketch mode, when selecting the fitting point of the sketch, it was inadvertently entered in point one of the flange mode. Now, the point selection in the flange from sketch mode is always the required fitting point. Furthermore, you can now change the connecting edge at any time by clicking on another edge. All further entries, such as planes, are only requested when all entries in the upper area have been completed. And now we come to a highlight of HiCAD 2025. With the major release, we are publishing the first version of the new standard processings. These can be found in the submenu of the old standard processings. The new function includes the creation of through holes, threads, countersinks, slots, and rectangular holes. The function and the dialog are still under development, but you can already use them productively. When the function is started, the active part is immediately highlighted to receive feedback as to which part is currently being processed. The smaller dialog on the right also plays an important role here, but more about that in a moment. In the dialog, the part to be processed is entered in the first control and can be changed. In addition, the pin symbol can be used to determine whether the part remains selected when the function is applied or not. Below that is the control for the processing plane, which is to be selected after starting the function. This also has a pin symbol. Since the processing is always generated in the negative Z direction, there is a button that can be used to reverse the direction. After selecting the processing plane, the insertion point must be specified in the adjacent window. To start with, I'll stick with the individual bore and select the center point. The bore and the installation point are displayed in a preview. 
In the form area, you now have the option to switch back and forth between the mentioned processings. Here, I choose the simple bore. In the type area, you can either select a specific standard and size from the catalog or enter a free diameter. You may be familiar with this type of input from the base plate dialog, for example. In the next step, you can quickly and easily specify the drilling depth using the buttons. You are already familiar with this from the new sectional view dialog, for example. Let's switch to the With Drilling Depth mode. The preview changes accordingly. Here, you can now enter the depth on the right and select a button for the reference, that is, where the depth should be measured from. This can be the entry surface or the processing plane. It is also now possible to determine the end form. That is, it can be determined whether the bore should be flat or acute at the end. Here, too, there is a button for the reference in each case. In this case, it is determined whether the point comes after the drilling depth or is integrated in the drilling depth. Next comes the option Perpendicular for laser cutting, but this is deactivated for limited depths and is intended for bores that are produced using a laser, for example for round pipes. Below that, you can also specify whether the processing is to be carried out in the workshop or on the site. At the bottom of the dialog, the representation of the processing can be set, that is, whether only the axes are visible or whether the processing is to be displayed exactly. Now let's change the processing to thread. In the type area, you can select a thread from the catalog or deactivate the catalog entry, then you can freely define the thread as in the thread dialog. We have already seen all the other settings. For the countersink processing, you can again select from the catalog or deactivate the entry and freely define the countersink. The desired countersink variant can be selected from the drop-down menu and then configured. By activating the head distance group, the countersink is either cylindrically deepened or conically extended by the specified distance. Let's switch to the slot processing. Here too, the setting options are listed as before. An important new feature here is that the slot can be created with depth and a tip. There is also the option to create the slot for laser processing. And finally, there is the rectangular hole processing. The previous setting options and the option for laser compatible production are also available here. After all processings have been presented, I will insert a through hole to show another special feature. If the processing is created with the depth through, but the part is partially interrupted, new crosshairs will appear at the entry and exit points. The center axis no longer goes all the way through. Now back to the grid window shown here. The grid type individual is pretty clear. With the linear grid type, you define a single axis grid, either via distances or via reference points. The buttons below can be used to quickly change the insertion position. The rectangular grid type is like linear, but in two directions. The only border option is important here as it ensures that only the operations that lie on the edge of the rectangle are created. With the rotatory grid type, you select a center point around which the processings are generated. With this grid type, the execution parameters for the slot change. Finally, the radial grid type for cylindrical surfaces. First, a processing plane must be selected for the direction. After that, the surface to be processed and the insertion position are selected. For the position, we recommend point option R. If you want to create a pitch circle here, the drilling depth next exit surface ensures that no processing appears on the other side.
Now I can activate the option Perpendicular for laser cutting. This changes the shape of the processing and the crosshairs disappear. You can also specify a clearance that adjusts the processing by this value. With the next patch, the functionality will be further expanded and replace the old standard processing. We invite you to use the new standard processings and look forward to your feedback. And that's it for this HiCAD short clip. I hope you enjoyed it and wish you lots of fun designing.